Today in our 2018 Thor Ace Motorhome, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Rear Anti Sway Bar, part number RM 1139 146. Having a motorhome can be a very nice thing, but one thing that nobody really talks about is how difficult they can be to drive and how much swaying they get and kind of that body roll. Especially when we're driving down the highway, a big crosswind comes by and it starts pushing us around. Because let's face it, there's a lot of area for that wind to catch. That's where our Roadmaster anti-sway bar is going to come into play. It's going to reduce the amount that we're going to have to fight the steering wheel back and forth, which in then turn we can relax a little bit and have more confidence when we're driving down the road. So here's where our sway bar looks like once we have it installed. The sway bar itself is going to be an inch and a half in diameter. So it is going to be a rather large bar and it's going to be made out of 41 40 chrome molly so it is going to be very rigid and stiff. Since our new Roadmaster sway bar is not going to replace our factory sway bar, it's going to help support it, we're going to have that much more stiffness and support in the back end. And the Roadmaster sway bar is going to use polyurethane bushings, which are going to be a lot more stiff than rubber ones, but at the same time they're also going to be a lot more resistant to a lot of the chemicals that we see on the road. Our sway bar is going to come with everything we need to get it installed including all the brackets, bushings, and the bar itself. One of the nicest things about it is that we're not going to have to cut or drill anything on our motorhome, and we can actually do the entire installation with all the wheels still on the ground. So now that we've seen what it looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, I want to start out saying we can do the entire install with all four tires on the ground. You just may want to lift up the back end using the leveling jack so the suspension can hang down a little bit, but you want to make sure you have jack stands in place to support everything. So we're going to come to our rear axle in the wheel well area, and if we look on the frame directly behind the tires, we're going to have two bolts at the bottom of the frame. We're going to need to remove those, so we'll take a 21 millimeter socket and an extension so we can reach in. Now there are little nuts on the back, but they have keepers on them, so we're not going to have to worry about using a wrench to hold it in place. Now that we have both bolts removed on this side, we're going to take the other side out as well, but you want to hold on to the hardware because we are going to be reusing it. With the bolts removed from both sides, we're going to grab our frame bracket, and you'll see it's going to have two tabs coming down, then it's going to have this L shape that will have two holes in it. That L shape with the holes is going to go on the outside of the frame, and the holes will match up with the holes we removed the bolts from. So we'll take our bolts, we're going to pass them through our bracket, and we'll line it up with the holes in our frame, put them back through, and then on the inside, we'll put those keeper nuts back in place. And for now, we're just going to get this hand tight so the keeper nuts won't fall off, and the bracket will stay on the frame there. Then we can come back with that 21 millimeter socket and make sure they're nice and snug. Now that this side's on, we'll go and repeat the same process for the other side as well. Now if we move inside towards the center of the axle, on each side we're going to have our shock mount. You'll notice there's going to be two holes in it. That's where our saddle clamps for our sway bar are going to go. But in order to get the hardware in place, we're going to have to remove the lower shock bolt and move the shock out of the way. So you want to grab an inch and an eighth wrench and socket so we can pull the bolt out and remove the nut. So we'll remove the nut, the washer, and we can pull the bolt out. You just want to hold on to all the hardware because we are going to be putting it back in. And for now we can just kind of pull the shock out of the way so that we can have access to behind the shock mount. And we're going to do that on both sides. On the top hole we're going to take a 3 8 bolt and a flat washer. We'll slide the flat washer over and then coming from behind the shock mount we'll feed the bolt through so it drops down like that. Now on the lower bolt hole, we're going to take one of our button head screws. It's going to have more of a flat rounded area. 
and we're going to take a flat washer but you'll see it has a flat section on it kind of cut out you want that cutout section to be facing towards the bottom so we don't have that washer sticking out interfering with the shock. But we'll feed it through the lower hole. That's gonna be the same combination of hardware on both sides. At this point we can get our bushings ready and put them on our sway bar. Now these are gonna be split bushings. So they'll have an opening. So we can just open them up and put them around the bar. But before we do, we wanna take the included lubricant Make sure we have a nice coating on the inside of the bushing itself. And this will make sure that it won't cause any squeaks if any moisture does get on the inside. We just kind of lift up on the sway bar a little bit, open up the bushing itself, and make sure it slides in place. We'll put the other one on the other side. Our saddle clamps here are gonna be a U shape. They'll have two holes, one on each end. And those are gonna have those bolts go through on the shock mount and go directly around the bushing and hold it directly to the axle. So we can just slide the bracket over our bushing on each side and then we can get ready to put it in place. Now it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands so we can lift our sway bar up and we can rotate our saddle clamps to where they're going to meet up with the bolts coming through our shock mount. Now once you have the saddle clamp going through, we're going to take another flat washer, put it on the outside, of the top bolt and we'll take one of our locking nuts to get it at least threaded on hand tight. Now on the bottom it is going to be a little different. We're still going to use that locking nut but we're using another one of those cut washers. Just want to make sure that it fits in place and then we'll put another one of the locking nuts in. Once we have all these hand tight we can come back and tighten all the hardware up. Now we can snug up our hardware for the button head bolt, we're going to be using a 732nds Allen and a 916th socket to hold the nut. For the top bolt, we're still going to use a 916th wrench to hold the, the nut, but we're also going to use a 916th socket to tighten up the bolts on the back side. We'll go ahead and tighten all of our hardware down. So now I'm going to come back with that same 732nds Allen socket and a 916 wrench. I'm going to torque down my bolts behind my shock before I put the bolt back in place. And we'll torque the upper bolt as well. We'll take our shock, put it into position, and we can put our bolt back through. Just make sure you have that washer on the bolt end. You may have to have a little bit of force to get it to come back through the other side of the eyelet. We get another flat washer, slide it over, and finally put the nut back in place. Grab our inch and an eighth inch wrench and socket and tighten everything back up. You want to make sure you do that for both sides. So we can grab one of our end link brackets here. The round section with the bushings in it is going to go straight to the frame bracket that we installed earlier. We'll take one of our long bolts. Coming from the outside, we'll pass it through the bracket and through the link, and then we'll secure it on the other side with the lock nut. Now you want to make sure that you're coming from the outside of the frame going in. That way we can clear the leaf spring and not have to worry about any kind of interference. Now you may need to lower your motorhome down if you did have it raised up earlier because if you did, the bolt most likely is going to be right in front of the leaf spring or we won't have room to put it in. And you're going to want to put these on both ends and once you have both of them in, you can raise up the sway bar and it will fit right in between the two tabs on the end link there. We'll take another bolt and again coming from the outside. Going towards the inside, we'll put the bolt through and then take another lock nut and secure everything down. We'll come back and we're going to tighten up the four bolts that are holding our sway bar in with a 24 millimeter wrench and a 24 millimeter socket, or you can use a 15 sixteenths. Now you want to be careful when you're tightening these up. You just want to snug them up to where they're touching because we don't want to crush the bushing or the sleeve on the inside. 
Then we'll come back with a torque wrench and we'll torque down our hardware to the specified amount in the instructions. And we'll repeat that for all of our remaining hardware. That'll finish up your look at the Rowmaster Rear Anti Sway Bar, part number RM 1139 146, on our 2018 Thor Ace Motorhome.